We were right! Vegapunk is officially joining the Straw Hats! Let's go! One Piece Chapter 1067 has finally confirmed our prediction since Wegopunk's introduction. Not only is he going to be the next honorary member of the Straw Hats, giving them major upgrades and information, he is also going to be the brains and encyclopedia of the entire world! <laughs> I know it sounds like a joke, but I'm dead serious. For a long time now, Oda has been teasing us on the creation and origins of Devil Fruits. And now, we finally get to know how it all works, along with Wegopunk using the same principle to create his own personal network of information, which will eventually be shared to every single person in the world. Yep, cause Oda just dropped the biggest big brain Devil Fruit since Luffy's God Fruit. Like, I, I mean, literally. Vegapunk has the brain brain no me. This big brain time. Chapter 1067 starts with the question everyone was thinking. What, what happened? happened to Vegapunk's humongous head? Well, yeah, he cut it off. Yeah, my man just shaved it off like a simple haircut. But Bunny's question and reaction gives us a greater understanding of the past. We know that Bunny was a child when she lost Soul Vegapunk and at her age enough to remember him, possibly when she was 7 give or take. Given that she's 24 years old now, brings us a time frame of 17 years ago, which would in turn suggest this meeting happened after the formation of the Revolutionary Dragons, as 22 years ago Bartholomew, her father and Ivankok started this army with Dragon. Whatever the reasoning for this meeting was, it was likely due to Vegapunk's affiliation with Dragon, who all were working together. However, Kuma's sudden capture and disappearance from the revolutionaries could have been a result of the world government threatening his daughter, Bonnie's life or even his entire kingdom. The government needed Kuma's special race DNA for the Seraphim and Pacifista project. Knowing Kuma, he isn't a person to care about his life for the greater good. But to protect his daughter, he had to give himself up for this experimentation. This special race DNA would also explain why Akainu was willing to trade with the likes of Blackbeard for the capture of Bonnie. And they kept her alive until now, where later Luchi in this very chapter says they don't need Bonnie anymore and will kill her. Wegopunk's own reaction to Bonnie's question also reinforces this timeline as he states he's glad to see Bonnie all grown up and healthy. But this sentiment doesn't go both ways. Bonnie seems to despise Vegapunk for what he did to her father, whereas Vegapunk clearly cares about her. His emotions actually solidify our theory, as Vegapunk definitely wouldn't help the government making Kuma into a pacifista unless Kuma himself suggested a plan of his own in mind. Kuma did not involve any of the revolutionary members, including Dragon, hence they're surprised when they found him like the way he is. So whatever plan Kuma came up with was something he knew they wouldn't agree to, meaning risking his life so they can get an upper hand on the world government, where the Seraphim might actually be a Trojan horse. But what were the countermeasures? Did Kuma just, just die? Well, using a balls deep prediction hockey, we believe that Kuma's actual mind and personality is stored in Wigapunk's big brain cloud database. <laughs> Yes, Wigglepunk drops a bombshell, revealing his devil fruit, the Nomi Nomi Nomi. <laughs> yeah, you guys ain't alone. Even Wegapunk is confused and annoyed at the fruit's name. The Nomi 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 is the brain brain fruit. <laughs> Serious? Which turned Vegapunk into a brainiac human. Oh! He allows Vegapunk to remember every little detail of information stored inside of his head. Coupled with his birth as a genius, with a limited data bank for his brain, this fruit power is amplified even more. Vegapunk literally has the biggest brain in the world. However, guys, big is not always better. What? Yes, Vegapunk's big brain has a downside. The more data the doctor absorbs, the larger his brain grows to compensate. And it seems it has absolutely zero limits. This is the very reason Vegapunk had to chop it off. It was getting too big. Pause. <laughs> Luffy, for the benefit of everyone thinking this, questions now that Vegapunk has lost his big brain. Is he stupid now? Shut your stupid. 
Vegapunk is not stupid, all right. In fact, he's so big brain, he somehow managed to detach his brain from his body and turned it into a freaking storage, a hard drive, a freaking server. Became so big, he had to move it to the upper half of the giant egg on his island. And he called it Punk Records. If that wasn't badass, I don't know what is. Now, we don't know how he actually managed to remove his brain, but considering that Devil Fruits reincarnate when the user dies, we can allude that Vegapunk was able to keep his brain alive without his body. Though with that said, his main body does still have a brain and is filled with an apple topped antenna which he uses to sink back to his original ginormous big brain. But all this crazy ass design gives us a massive hint to how devil fruits actually work. Vegapunk's devil fruit itself, the Nomi 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 has a name which represents all the fruits that have the power of the so-called devils or spirits. Though Nomi in Japanese reflects the understanding of fruits or berry, in the world of One Piece, it's actually a representation of storage or a container of some sort. For instance, the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika held the spirit of Nika, the warrior of liberation. Once it was eaten, the container broke and the spirit in it was fused with Luffy as though so he became the next container itself. Likewise, Vegapunk's Devil Fruit acts as a container that infinitely grows as it gets filled with information. This proves that Devil Fruits works in a similar way, where the fruit itself is only a container. But Vegapunk being able to separate his big brain from his body gives us the next hint on how Devil Fruit spirits might work. Think of all the information in Vegapunk's brain as the multitude of spirits, devils and all sorts of powers stored in the fruit. Vegapunk managed to separate himself from all this information and implant an apple shaped antenna to his head so he can receive and send information back to this huge brain or now no me storage. Vegapunk's antenna head represents a new fruit and the information sent to it is from the daddy fruit which is the punk records and as long as punk records stays intact the information or as in this case the representation of spirits will never die. What I'm saying is that the devil fruits operate in a similar fashion. They too are able to reincarnate cause they are complex information being sent to one storage to the next. Think about it. Devil fruits before being eaten are only holding said information but after eating it it shares its data with the DNA of the consumer. The information is shared and stored in every aspect of their lineage factor hence how Vegapunk was able to replicate Kaido's devil fruit to some degree. When it comes to Zoan fruits, the essence isn't just information which is shared, but also a will and personality. When a devil fruit user dies, this essence of the devil fruit leaves and finds a compatible storage unit or fruit to store in. It does this by using its own type of energy wave, possibly a power that the ancient kingdom utilized to operate their technology, where I still think it's a form of Haki. But with all this in mind, just as Vegapunk has his punk records, there could be a universal point where the Devil Fruits conceptions, updates and movements all operate, which we believe to be a gigantic tree, possibly even the one in Marijoa, Sunlight E. Yep, this is turning out to be some avatar blue people type of shit where even the experiences of an individual can be stored. Vegapunk is able to upload, download and share knowledge into punk records to the point of all the information that makes him him. Vegapunk then cloned himself and segmented his personality. In a way, if his brain can survive without his body, then Vegapunk is technically immortal as long as punk records is kept intact. Even if he and all his clones die, he should easily be able to upload his consciousness to another clone. Maybe even a seraphim that he created. Likewise, the Sunlight Eve or another tree which is stored in, I don't know, let's say Laughtail, might act as this universal backup system for all dull fruits. Either way, Oda in his SPS stated that Vegapunk will reveal everything about devil fruits and I'm sure this will further explain how he was able to single out his own big brain. But coming back to the chat. After, Vegapunk explains that he has six clones in the island, whom all represent certain aspect of his fully embodied self. They share the same brain and information which is updated on a daily basis, as once a day, these clones connect back to his original big brain, which is now 
Vegapunk Records. Basically, my guy Vegapunk is going full on Hukage Naruto. He has six clones going around collecting information and completing different tasks daily. He's six times as efficient, making his knowledge grow just as fast. The government and Umusama have likely started to realize Vegapunk's vast knowledge has grown far too much, only seeing him now as a threat which needs to be neutralized. But out of everything, the biggest threat he poses is his centralized data bank, Punk Records itself. This can essentially be developed to act as an open source library to the world, something which Umusama and the government would never allow. Remember, they are all about secrecy and control. They want to suppress information, not let it be free for everyone to access. In fact, Wegopunk informs Jinbei that he wants to develop Punk Records to a point where everyone can update it, not just him. He basically wants to create the internet in one piece. But Jinbei brings up a good point. If you let everyone share their thoughts and ideologies, wouldn't that lead to big problems? Which Vegapunk acknowledges as a fair point. But this progress is needed for science to move forwards. In a weird way, this is also an encapsulation of freedom. Maybe even the ancient kingdom created this internet-like network where people around the world could communicate and share knowledge. This could even relate to the voice of all things. But just as Jinbei says, the clash of biased ideologies eventually caused the world to collapse. Just like in our world where social media has allowed people to connect with each other at a pace never seen before, but this has led to echo chambers of ideas in certain communities, thus causing a greater divide in the world. If everyone is updated by this network, no one will feel the drive to go on adventures to discover things for themselves with their nakamas. If all knowledge and thoughts of every person is available, how do you moderate such discourse? How do you discern what is truth and what are lies? Oda is using Vegapunk and his network to give a perspective on the current events of our world where, although it looks like we are more connected than ever, in reality we are the most divided. Like if you say One Piece is a great anime on Twitter, someone will definitely comment DBZ is better. The tweet was simply saying One Piece is a great anime. It was not not implying in any way a comparison between how good One Piece is compared to another anime. The comment of DBZ is better has turned a simple tweet expressing the feelings of One Piece being a good show into a contest between DBZ and One Piece. We all have experienced something like this on Twitter or Instagram or whichever comment section where you say one thing and someone interprets it as something different causing conflict. Perhaps a similar difference of opinion from the masses is the reason for the ancient kingdom's demise. So as a backlash to this horrific event, Imusama and the world government want to have a strict control over the flow of information and knowledge around the world because every good villain starts their journey with good intentions. Bonnie then threatens Vegapunk with a lightsaber, seeking to avenge her father for what Vegapunk turned him into in the name of science. But Vegapunk just says that the saver is a failure as Bonnie orders him to make Kuma human again. She tries to murder him right there, pressing the button on the side of the device, but it turns out the device just attracts a huge amount of insects. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. Bonnie faints from the fear of the insects, and Vegapunk understands why she wants to kill him as he looks solemnly at the ground. He clearly shows regret for what's happened. Due to his experiments and plan with Kuma, innocent Bonnie had to suffer without her father. Vegapunk also answers the question we have all been wondering since chapter 684. He asks Luffy about rumors of another dragon on Wano, asking him if it's true. Luffy confirms the dragon was Momo who ate Vegapunk's fruit in Punk Hazard. We were all wondering why this OP fruit was a failure as Momo can use both Boro Breath, the flame clouds to lift islands, and himself, plus his adult size is comparable to Kaido. Well, it was a failure because it was the wrong color. Are you serious? Yeah, Vegapunk is a major perfectionist which ties into his genius scientific mind. If he never thinks something is good enough, he'll keep going over and over again, discovering more and more. But on a serious level, other than the color, Vegapunk could be talking about the will of the fruit. He created the devil fruit from the lineage factor of Kaido he obtained 20 years ago. 
Despite this, Vegapunk says that Momo's growth will not be the same as Kaido since he couldn't get the fruit just right. Normally, when someone eats a devil fruit, they know their powers and name of the fruit. The fruit becomes a part of them and they learn to use it very quickly. For example, when Khalifa and Kaku ate their respective fruits, they could effectively use their fruits at a high level. Even Sabu, after eating the Mera Mera Nomi, started handling his flames swiftly. But Momo had to learn to command the fruit to work for him. It didn't come as just second nature, he had zero control over it. This could relate back to our theory of devil fruits where Vegapunk can't get it to synchronize with the body. This would explain why he's also so adamant in suppressing the natural instincts of creatures because we know from Jabra that when someone eats a carnivore zone, like his wolf fruit, their personalities get shaped and shifted a little by the fruit, like him wanting to bite things. Akainu's hot burning lava fruit could be influenced his absolute justice where lava keeps flowing, burning away everything in its path just like Akainu burning away Ohara. Or the calm and cool lazy justice of Aokiji could be the result of his chill chill fruit, where particles in cold move slower or lazily. This synchronization of the fruit's essence and the user is what Vegapunk was missing. This could be due to lacking the foundational energy the spirits of the fruits communicate. As we mentioned earlier, the personality and will it itself is a component that aids the devil fruit user rather than completely melding into their DNA. This failure of Vegapunk could have inspired him to experiment on zone fruits and inanimate objects with no DNA factor to change, resulting in the elephant sword. The spirit in the zone literally becomes the primary will giver when combined to an object with no will of its own. Coming back to the chapter, Vegapunk elaborates on the giant robot Luffy had found in chapter 1065. The robot was created 900 years ago and belonged to the ancient kingdom, but an eerie incident took place 200 years prior to the present day. The robot had literally climbed the red line and attacked the city of Marie-Joie before running out of fuel. You chads with the notification bell on will know that we have made a video about this going in detail regarding the possible infinite fire energy from 900 years ago that Vegapunk talks about. In short, a fuel or energy could have been obtained and converted by the ancient kingdom with the help of the Lunarians and Fishfolk. The Sunlight Tree Eve could have been a powerhouse having multiple functionalities. But now the question arises, with such technology, how did the ancient kingdom actually lose? If the fuel was infinite like a sun, how did the robots of the time run out of fuel? Well, it all links back to our Emu D Judas theory where it was the betrayal of Emu-sama, an inside person in Joy Boy's crew who may have caused this fuel source to be destroyed or turned off. With, of course, the manipulation of Zunisha giving us the hint of the crime he committed 800 years ago. Robin also notes that this incident that occurred 200 years ago lines up with the time when Fishman right movement started to gain ground. In chapter 620, Hachi explained how only 200 years ago for the first time in centuries, the fish people were finally seen as people. Before, they were just considered as fish. Yep, there were probably restaurants selling fishmen with your favorite potato chips. <laughs> However, something happened 200 years ago that changed the position of the government towards their kind, where now we know it's likely linked to this very robot. As all this crazy revelation is dropped on us, Vegapunk addresses Bonnie's plight. Though she herself is knocked out, he states how he had something to give her. This obviously being Kuma's message, which he likely left behind. But wasting no time, Vegapunk gets down to business. Yep, he wants to join Luffy's crew. Okay, no, no, no. Not exactly, but just like Vivi, he needs help. Yep, you all thought that Bonnie was going to be the next princess of the art. No, it's actually Vegapunk. He is the damsel in distress. <laughs> Vegapunk straight up states that him and Luffy meeting must be fate and asks Luffy to take him on his ship and out of Egad Island. Yes, but it doesn't stop there as Luffy and Dragon are also now destined to meet. How I hear you ask? Well, CP0 has officially reached Egghead Island, only to be shunned away by Shaka. Rob Lucci tells Shaka that he's here to return the Kuma Seraphim. But 
but Shaka tells him to leave Kuma there and return back, <laughs> declining their request to talk. But we know that isn't going to happen as in chapter 1062, we learn that the world government is officially done with Vegapunk and he is set for termination. Shaka, realizing that the time has come, just like how he foretold Dragon about his death, prepares his Seraphim for battle. The chapter then cuts to Kambaka Queendom, where the revolutionary headquarters currently is. Here we see Kuma getting activated and just Usain bolting out of there. To everyone's surprise, Dragon literally screams telling Kuma to stay back as the battle is about to begin. This in itself is a huge hint that Dragon will end up coming to Egghead. Perhaps Kuma's Papa fruit power may send both of them through the air to Egghead Island, who knows. But Dragon arriving may end up tipping the scales of the battle towards the Straw Hats, similar to how Shanks ended up in Marineford at the end of the war. Vegapunk's control of the pacifistas and Seraphim might have recalled the original Kuma back to him where the revolutionaries follow their comrade and all of them end up right in the middle of Egghead Island. But let's be honest, Luffy can probably like one shot Rob Lucci now, let's be honest, he's gonna go gear 5, one tap, he's dead. <laughs> but if you want to learn more about how devil fruits work, then click the video on screen right now because it's a banger.